Hi, I'm Gavin, and welcome back to The Sound Project. Today's episode, we're going to talk about a phenomenon called flutter echo. And this is something you may have heard in a room before where you clap your hands or something drops on the floor, and then you hear what sounds kind of like a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth between walls. And uh, it is a phenomenon that, that can be a little bit disconcerting and distracting, and uh, it's something that you want to avoid in spaces where critical listening is important. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and what causes it, maybe some ways that uh, we can improve upon it. So. Typically, this happens between two parallel surfaces that are hard and reflective. You know, something where what you're actually hearing here is the delay of the sound hitting one surface, bouncing back across, hitting the other surface, bouncing back and forth. And then if the materials are very hard and reflective and not very absorptive, then the energy level stays pretty high because it's only diminishing a little bit every time it touches a surface and you keep hearing that delay bouncing back and forth. Um, typically, it's heard as a, a higher frequency, kind of a ring or a, a zipping or a metallic sound. Like I said, kind of like a, a ping pong ball sound uh, bouncing back and forth. And it's most noticeable when you have like sharp and percussive sounds, you know, th something like a hand clap or a, a, a speech consonants or things like a balloon pop, you know, that will also uh, set something like that off. So flutter echo can be um, kind of fun to hear actually, but it, if it's in a room where you're trying to record or uh, maybe some uh, a performance space or an auditorium or something like that, it can be distracting and not good for speech intelligibility. Um, so what is flutter echo and why is it problematic? Um, you know, uh, it affects clarity and imaging uh, in your space because if you're having these delayed sounds back in, uh, bouncing back and forth, it's, it's hard to make decisions if you're, let's say, mixing audio or you're trying to listen to uh, someone who is who is speaking or playing music. Um, it also smears transients, so particularly with uh, vocals, percussion, and critical listening, uh, and that can cause issues with your critical listening. Um, it makes room sounds harsh and metallic and overly live sounding. It, it, it gives you the sense that the reverb time is extended anytime you have a lot of flutter echo in a room. And it also interferes with accurate recordings and mixing and monitoring. If you're having a sensitive microphone placed somewhere and it happens to be be between, uh, being between two parallel surfaces and there's a flutter echo occurring, then that's going to diminish the quality of the recording that you're going to have. And then for large rooms, it can impact speech intelligibility and can be distracting for audiences. Like if the you know someone were to stand up and speak and they hear flutter echo from their voice or they clap their hands and they hear that, it can be a little, little uh, uh, unnerving and, and something that should be taken care of. So there's different types of flutter echo. I mentioned two parallel surfaces, and that's the most common that you end up hearing flutter echo. But you can also have it between a concave wall or a concave ceiling and a flat floor, um, like the center image on the on the uh, slide right now. Um, that can c create a, a flutter echo scenario. And then it also can happen between three surfaces where you have one flat surface and then two other surfaces that are peaked. Um, it's, this can happen on a peaked ceiling or if a room is designed designed in this way uh, and not treated properly, you can still get uh, flutter echo in those situations. So when you're testing and trying to look for flutter echo issues, you typically do an impulse response to try to show energy over time. And this graph that is on the, the right-hand side here, at time equals zero, you see a large spike, in, and that is uh, amplitude on the left uh, axis and then frequency, or, or sorry, time on the uh, bottom axis there. And on the left-hand side at time equals zero, you have a big spike, and that's the direct sound hitting the microphone from the test loudspeaker. And then all those spikes that you see see over time are delayed reflections that are coming from some surface in the room. And this impulse response is showing flutter echo uh, because you see how those spikes are evenly spaced and they're kind of rhythmic. Um, that's because the sound is taking the same path and the same distance every time. And so it keeps arriving back to the microphone in these intervals. And so anytime you have something like this and you see this show up on an impulse response graph, you have to look at whether or not it's a flutter echo issue or some sort of focusing that's happening because of a concave surface. Uh, but this is what it looks like and it shows up this way. 
So one thing that can help us with uh, diagnosing uh, existing flutter echo issues is doing ray tracing. And this is something that we do often where it's a, a software program where you can import room geometry uh, into it. And then you can place a speaker and a microphone in various spots within the room and see with these blue lines how sound is bouncing around the room. Because at mid and high frequencies, sound bounces around the room like billiard balls on a pool table. Angle of incidence is going to be equal to angle reflection and you start to see that with the geometry of these rooms and for instance like that top left uh, um, room diagram here where it's it's got uh, basically a, a hexagon shape to the room uh, you see the speaker and the microphones located towards the center of the room and those side walls being uh, uh, canted the way that they are are causing this focusing and this flutter that can happen in the center of the room now if you move that microphone to some other location within the room you may not experience it as much uh, but in that location if there's a source and someone listening they're, they're, they're going to hear flutter echo um, uh, the bottom left diagram shows that scenario of a concave uh, uh, rear wall and then a, a reflective front wall. And that concave surface is causing focusing and, and flutter echo that's happening in that room. Bottom right is just a typical rectangular room with uh, parallel surfaces. So left to right and front to back, you're going to get flutter echo in that space. And then the top right diagram is showing a rectangular room, but the uh, source and the receiver are in opposite corners. And that causes flutter as well. And so by doing these ray tracing, if we're designing a space from the ground up, we can look at the room geometry and make sure that we're avoiding it as much as we can with the shape of the room. Uh, but if it's an existing space and they have issues and concerns with flutter echo, we can start to diagnose it by moving speakers and microphones around the room and being able to see how these patterns form. So preventing flutter echo, what can you do? One thing is avoid parallel surfaces in your room. Uh, a lot of times this is... Uh, uh, not avoidable when you have an existing space and it's already been built and there's parallel walls existent. Uh, but if you're trying to design a new uh, space, then you can try to avoid these parallel walls that are going to cause flutter echo. Uh, sound absorbing or dif uh, diffusion treatment is going to take care of flutter echo as well. So you're either with sound absorption, uh, you're going to remove energy from the room and absorb that energy. So if it's absorbed, it has less of a chance to then bounce back to the other wall and repeat that flutter echo pattern. If it gets absorbed by that surface, then the room uh, dies out very quickly and you don't have that flutter echo concern. With diffusion, it does the same thing, just in a different way. It's instead of absorbing and taking that energy out of the room, it scatters and, and diffuses that energy back into the room and breaks up that pattern of the bounce back and forth. Um, and you, another thing you can do is as far as avoiding parallel surfaces, a rule with that is, is that you need a 10 degree or more tilt uh, for if you're only angling one of the walls that were going to be parallel. Um, if you just angle one of those walls, it needs to be at least 10 degrees or the sum of the two angles for each wall needs to be 10 degrees. So you could go five degrees and five degrees or six degrees and six degrees. Uh, as long as it's more than 10, then that flutter echo is going to disappear. So in summary, uh, flutter echo is a, it's a repeated reflections between parallel surfaces that can sound a little bit like a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth. Um, it's easily detected and corrected with basic acoustical treatment. It doesn't take a whole lot to uh, take care of this flutter echo, uh, but it sure can be distracting if you do uh, have a situation where you, you are experiencing flutter echo in your room. And uh, it can be uh, avoided with proper design and construction in new spaces. Like we can plan ahead and make sure that, that uh, sound is bouncing around the room um, it's going to bounce around the room regardless, but as long as it's not uh, continuing that flutter echo pattern, it's going to be less distracting. So that's been another episode of The Sound Project. Thanks for being a part of it. And if you've ever experienced flutter echo in some way, uh, please comment about that situation below, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>